So we need to talk about social security. And the reason we need to talk about social security is because I receive countless emails, countless comments here on YouTube. And people are asking and wondering and questioning whether or not social security will even be around in 2024. How dependent can they be on social security in 2030, 2035, and so on? A lot of people are speculating that social security will not be around when it comes time for them to retire in the next 10, maybe 15 or 20 years. I want to address those concerns. I also want to address the more you know, pressing concerns. What's going to happen with the cost of living adjustment for 2024? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? What should we expect? So that's what I'm going to discuss today. Also, I want to talk about Social Security overpayments. That's another big one. We are now getting some updates from the Social Security Administration regarding that want to address what's happening there and how they are planning to help you. So make sure you stick around for this entire video. And I'll explain exactly what's going on. So let's get right down to it. First, what is going on with Social Security? The first thing that you need to keep in mind is that right now our economy is, is going strong. We are seeing, uh, you know, just in the past month, we've seen 336,000 jobs were created. That puts upward pressure on inflation. We also know gas prices have gone up. We know home prices across the country, again, they're getting a little bit more expensive. Food prices are going up. Travel costs, again, going up. As everything is going up, so should the cost of living adjustment. So I know it's not a good thing if we continue to see higher inflation. Right now, we have inflation at 3.7% which is 1.7% higher than what the Federal Reserve wants it to be. However, this could be good news for Social Security recipients. And the reason for that is because we are likely to see inflation go back up. We may hit 4% inflation once again, which would be double what the Federal Reserve wants. However, the reason why this would be good news is because in 2024, all Social Security recipients would receive a cost of living adjustment that would be higher than what it is currently expected to be, which is 3.2%. We may see you get 3.5%. Now, yes, it's down from the 8.7% that Social Security recipients received for 2023. However, it's better than nothing. And the other reason why this is potentially good news is if inflation goes up, it pushes the cost of living adjustment up as well. That cost of living adjustment will be locked in Okay, it's already locked in, whatever it comes out to be, because with today, it's October 7th. In the next five days, on October 12th, we are going to have the new CPI report. So sometime after that, could be the 12th, the 13th, or the 14th, we're going to have the new cost of living adjustment numbers. It's going to come out from the Social Security Administration. The good news there, 2024, that will be locked in. So if inflation goes down to 2% or 1%, or let's say we see uh, deflation, which I doubt, guess what? You're still locked in with your cost of living adjustment. It won't go away. So that's the good news there. Now, something else that a lot of people have been asking is will this uh, increase in employment, does this help Social Security outside of potentially seeing a cost of living adjustment increase? The answer is yes. As we see uh, employment come back, come roaring back, as some people are calling it, what we're gonna see is those people that are employed are now paying into the social security system, into the social security trust fund. That's what we need. We need more people working, more people paying into the system so that the system has more money. If it doesn't have money, that's the worry is, then it would become insolvent in the, in the next 10 years. But the other problem is if more people decide not to work, their hours are getting cut, their pay gets reduced, that means less money goes in to the trust fund. And then Social Security's trust fund could become insolvent much sooner, potentially in 2033 or 2032. So we'll see what happens there. Now, one thing I wanna to touch on is this, this overpayment crisis that we're facing. 
What we're getting a lot of questions on from people is, how come the Social Security Administration is coming after those that they knowingly paid more money? Shouldn't they just be say that, oh, sorry, we made an overpayment, keep it, it's fine? No. The Social Security Administration does have rules. They cannot break those laws. These are laws that Congress has put in place. So Congress is telling the Social Security Administration, if you made an overpayment, it doesn't matter if it's $1,200 or if it's $12,000 or $120,000, you have to go and get it back. We need that money back because this is the money we allocated for you. You cannot just give it away. So it's not the Social Security Administration. <clears throat> it's Congress. <clears throat> Congress is the one that's telling us, sorry, we're yes, they gave you more money, but we have to come back and we need to get that money. So what's the Social Security Administration doing? Well, here's what they're telling us. They said, instead of just waving off all the overpayments, which they cannot do, Congress does have the authority to do that. That at this time, Congress will not do that because there'd be no way Congress would be able to get enough support to just wave off $21 billion in overpayments. Now, so what are they doing? Well, here's the plan. The plan by the Social Security Administration, according to their uh, commissioner, is saying that instead of changing the, the rules and changing the law, what they're doing is they're changing their reporting process to make it easier. And this really goes for, you know, the, for SSI, SSDI, because those are two programs that require constant um, reporting by the beneficiary. So let's say you get injured and you're working, you know, X amount of hours per week. Okay. You can't work a full 40 hours. Maybe you only work 25 hours one week and maybe you work 30 hours the next week and 35 the next week and, and so on and so forth, right? It just fluctuates. Well, you need to be able to report that to to uh, your you know, administrator. You need to be able to point uh, report that because if you don't and they think, okay, well, this guy, he only worked 30 hours or 25 hours last week, chances are he's gonna work 25 hours this week, they're just gonna send over the same payment. But then you report that, oh, my bad, I worked 38 hours. Well, then you got an overpayment, okay? If, for example, uh, we'll just talk about uh, uh, Social Security, okay? So let's say you and your spouse both receive Social Security. You both receive a, your Social Security monthly check, okay? Let's say you're 72 years old, it doesn't matter, right? but you're 72 years old, both of you, and let's say your spouse passes away. Let's say, well, let's just use September for example. Let's say it's September 25th and your spouse passes away. Well, in September 30th, I believe, um, you would receive, or 29th or 30th, you would have received a check for October, okay? Uh, because October 1st was on a Sunday. So on September 30th, you would have received your check for uh, the, the previous month, okay? So what happens there is, okay, your spouse passed away on September 25th. According to the Social Security Administration, the, they're paid one month behind. So you're paid for September and October. Well, get this, if you are not alive for the entire month, you do not get that check. You have to be alive for every single day. So let's say you pass away on the 25th, or let's say the 29th, on Friday. Well, guess what? You missed one day. You're not eligible for that payment, but yet that payment would still show up on September 30th, okay? That would be an overpayment. You would be forced to pay that back. Now, they might not come after you the, you know, the second day that it happens, right? Or the first month or whatever, but after you cancel that, they might figure that out. They will likely figure that out at some point and ask for that money back. So just keep that in mind. That is part of it. And that's why they want to make these systems simpler as far as uh, going in and reporting your income or your specific situation because right now it's just too complicated. Now, 
I don't think it's that complicated, but I'm on the computer, you know, a lot. So, you know, I'm fairly tech savvy, but for somebody that maybe doesn't have a great computer, they're, they're not using the internet on a daily basis, they, they don't have a smartphone, right? For people like that, it, it's somewhat difficult. And that's why they're trying to make it easier because if people can go into a system and easily and consistently report their earnings or their specific situation, it will make it simpler for the Social Security Administration and there would not be that many overpayments. At least that's what they're saying. So if you were expecting that they're gonna come out and say that, yeah, we're just gonna waive those overpayments, don't worry, you don't have to pay them back. They do not have the authority to do that, Congress does. And at this time, Congress is likely not going to support a bill that would waive any overpayments, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, the last thing I just wanna say is that Social Security is gonna have many different uh, supporters, uh, people in opposition of it over the next year. And it's not because people really support Social Security or those are really in opposition. It's, chances are, it's just a more of a, of a showing to, you know, for these lawmakers to show their constituents that, you know what, I, I do support Social Security. I do support, you know, uh, increasing benefits. And there may, there may never be a bill that comes out that pushes an increase to Social Security over the next year. But are people going to talk about it? Yeah, you bet you. They're going to talk about it because we have an election. The election is going to dictate what they discuss. And again, Social Security is up there as one of the, the most prioritized things in this next year. So we'll see what happens moving forward, but that is what we know as of this morning regarding Social Security. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next one.